Not only is Donald Trump telling everybody to wait, 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 a lot of the media that's out there now has scrubbed the audio of Donald Trump telling everybody to wait, wait, wait. Luckily, I got that in real time and downloaded it, so I have it on my computer, and I can use that and show it to you. But other media outlets who are showing this clip over and over and over again have actually cut the wait, wait, wait out. They don't want people to think all of a sudden that this could be something. Why is this something that Donald Trump is thinking about after being shot? He's not thinking about getting to safety, getting off stage, getting to his children, his wife. He's thinking about a photograph, right? Because the photograph is what puts you in the state of psychosis. So that brings me to this. If you haven't seen this, this is very important that you pay attention to it. There's a photographer who is standing right behind Donald Trump while this occurs. The Secret Service comes up to this photographer and tells him to go, to get into position to take these photographs. You can see the screenshot on your screen, and I'll show you the video in real time. This man is standing there with the camera. The Secret Service knows that this is about to go down. Why else would the Secret Service go up to this guy and tell him to run to the side of the stage to take some of these infamous photos? And you'll see that this man not only goes to the side of the stage, he goes to the front of the stage, right behind Donald Trump as he's escorted into his vehicle. So watch the Secret Service and keep in mind the other stuff that I've shown you and you've all seen where there's people telling the Secret Service that they see somebody on a rooftop and the Secret Service ignored people telling them that there was a man on a rooftop. This is what the Secret Service was busy doing because the Secret Service knew this was coming. And for the people out there that don't understand how false flags work, they hear this stuff and they hear us talking about it being scripted and then they say, ask the victim, ask the family members. A false flag is an operation, is an act committed with the intent of disguising the actual source of responsibility. The source of responsibility is your own government, the left and the right working together. It doesn't mean that there weren't shots actually fired and there weren't actually victims. Sometimes they actually fake that in events like the hook at Sandy. In cases like this, they let the sniper on the roof actually hit some of the civilians deliberately in the crowd, knowing that Donald Trump could easily just smash a packet of blood on his ear, as it appears that he did, to give the illusion that it was an attempt on his life. It doesn't mean that there's not casualties. The perfect example is the 11th day of September that we all know about. That is a false flag. Real things actually occur. People actually were killed. But it doesn't mean that the narrative or the story that they give you is real. It was a carried out event. This is a carried out actual event that occurred by your government to give the illusion that conservatives and Donald Trump are now under attack from Democrats. And psychologically, we all see where this is going and how much of an effect it's having on people. But look at the photographer here. Watch him be told by Secret Service that this is about to go down so they can position him to take these now iconic, quote unquote, photos. situation. He is attempting to stand and walk on his own. He has got his hand pumping, pumping in the air. His fist is pumping in the air, but quickly they are removing him from the stage. This is happening very quickly. We are trying to assist in the air. His fist is pumping in the air, but quickly they are removing him from the stage. This is happening very quickly. We are trying to um, ascertain what happened, but 
So if you followed him around, you saw that he got the cue from the Secret Service. Why else would the Secret Service tell this guy to move positions to go and take photographs? Why would the Secret Service care at all about a man standing there with a camera to take photographs? Is that their main concern is photographs? Of course not. They don't expect you to notice these things because they expect you to watch television as most people do in an alpha or delta state where you're being put under hypnosis. This is the problem that the government is having is that because of the thing, the tool that they're using for mind control, which is really the internet in a sense, right? The internet is needed for the new world order. But the thing they're having trouble combating is people like me and you who are going back, watching footage, rewinding footage. We don't need a VHS. We don't need, you know, we are able to do this very quickly. We're able to see things that people are filming on their phones, which backfires for them. So that's part of the reason that they need all of these security measures in place for being able to combat what they call disinformation, is that people are able to actually break down, just like if you were watching a crime show and you were trying to solve the crime, there's all these podcasts about true crimes and stuff, and you know shows about trying to solve cold cases, and everybody's okay with the people trying to solve those cases. They're saying, well, we, you know, what evidence do you, what do you see that I don't see? Let's try to crack this case. But when it comes to the stuff in the news, like this, people seem offended by people who are pointing out anomalies or bizarre things that are happening around the event that they're telling us. We're taking their word verbatim as if these events are real. And that is where the problem comes from, is us looking at the news and thinking it's real. The media is the enemy of the people, again, is the common theme that most have. But they can't seem to get past the fact that the news itself is manufactured. It's scripted. It's acted out in real time, like a reality show. And these things that you just saw were acted out. Wag the Dog is a perfect example. And they use the movie Wag the Dog. They stage war. And again, this is what they do in real life. They fictionalize this in movies, so you think that the notion of this is not possible. And you dismiss it, oh, just like that movie, right? But this is another form of hypnosis, showing you what they really do in films, Films that you go to see in the movies thinking that they're fiction, they're showing you the truth. You turn the TV on and you take what you see on the news verbatim as real, actual things that are happening. Think about the psychosis you could put up, be put under if you think everything you see on that screen is real because they're telling you that it's real. A deep psychosis, what you're seeing right now around the world, right? especially in America, the psychosis of this left-right paradigm. This psychosis where they come out and they tell you, hey, you know what? We need to take a step back. We need to, you know, people need to stop. This act on Trump was very horrible. People are getting too, too into this stuff. They're getting too crazy about what's going on. Well, who, who's making people crazy? Who's putting people in this state of psych, you know, psychosis where you actually see after the staged event occurs how people respond, where 50% of the population is unhinged and angry and upset, and the other half is upset because the act that was carried out on Trump didn't go to fruition that they were wishing that it actually ended up killing him. That's a psychosis, right? But they want you to obviously think that you're the problem, you're getting too extreme in this stuff, when they're using the media to gaslight our civilians, all of us, into believing something that's not even real. So here's a clip from Wag the Dog I just want to show you that I've used before in regards to war, because we talk about this stuff with war all the time, right? Everybody gets upset and they go, well, you're saying that nothing's going on over in these places where war is going on? No, something's going on. But it's not what you see or perceive war as, where you think that there's two militaries lined up against each other. What's happening is civilians are under attack from the governments who are working together to go after the civilians. This is a perfect example of how they really stage war. And the notion of this in people's minds is out of comprehension because they can't believe that these people are so wicked. But I tell you, all the things that you've been taught as fake as history is, in your mind, you can perceive people like Hitler, the, you know, the Roman Empire, as wicked and evil people. So why can't you think that your own government be this wicked and use these types of methods to convince you of things that aren't really going on to try and tell you that they are so they could then manipulate you into doing what they want? Here's a clip from Wag the Dog. I'm in show business, yes? Why come to me? You know why? Why? It's show business. That's why we're here. V for victory. Five Marines raising the flag, Mount Suribachi. One video of one bomb, Mr. Moss. The American people bought that war. Mm -hmm. War is show business. You want me to produce your war? 
not a war. It's a pageant. We need a theme, a song, some visuals. We need. Okay, good. Put the put the, the village behind it. Hello, Moto. Give me some flames. Some sound of screaming.
because he was an Intel agent as well. He wasn't just some photographer that they hired off of Craigslist. He was an Intel agent. He's part of the CIA. That was his job on that day, knowing that these trained professionals were not going to accidentally hit him, that these trained professionals knew that he was a part of what you know of the team and that he needed to get the pictures so that the pictures could continue to ignite the psychosis. That's how all this stuff works. It's completely staged and planned out. You have to come out of this psychosis. This is something that people are prideful about. They are so caught up in this. They feel like they're a part of a team. It's like telling somebody who's like a Yankee fan or a Red Sox fan or any sport, all of a sudden that they can't root for that team anymore because they feel invested in the team. They're obsessed with the team, the team, Trump, team, Trump, MAGA, right? The Democrats, the, the blue ticket. They're in the psychosis. They don't want to come out of the psychosis when the evidence shows you that you are under mind control. And they don't want to believe that mind control is even real. Unless, of course, it's something like calling the media the enemy of the state, but not even realizing what the media does. They produce manufactured, scripted television that they tell you is reality when it's not. I thank everybody for being here. Hope you're all doing well. Share this video. Try to wake up a friend. God bless all of you and your families.